In today's video tutorial, we're going to learn how to make the imitation CC beanie. And um, I'm gonna have the pattern available in my Etsy shop, so I'll include the link um, in the description. And what you'll need for this is some worsted weight yarn. This is um, Karen's Cotton. It was, comes in like a cake at Michael's. Um, some four millimeter, 16 inch circular needles, a darning needle, a stitch marker, some scissors, an optional elastic thread for the brim. Um, here's a few of the hats that I've already made right here. And you can look at the stitch, the stitching up close and I'll show you my white one right here. And they're, they have a double brim, right? So they're, it's, the brim is folded over and I picked up the stitches um, after the 20th row. So I'm gonna show you how to knit this beanie. So you're going to take your needles and we're going to cast on 80. And how I do that is um, I determine how long I need my my tail because I'm going to do the long tail cast on method. So I'm going to loop over two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And then what I do is I take this part right here. And then I fold it. I don't know if you can see that. And then that's going to be, since the first was 20, this is 40 after I folded it. Then I'm going to fold it again, the length of that. That's 60. And then you're going to fold it again. And that's 80. And I also leave a little bit just in case it's not long enough, but usually I end up with more. And then we're gonna do a slip knot. And then we're gonna cast on 80 stitches. And the way you cast on, you gotta hold your yarn like this. And then you scoop and scoop. That's two stitches. Scoop and scoop. It's three stitches and try not to do it too tight. Scoop and scoop. It's four. And you're going to do this until you have 80 stitches on your knitting needle. Once you've cast on your 80 stitches, then you're going to join. You're gonna put your stitch marker on your right needle, and then you're going to knit through your first stitch by putting your needle through the back of the stitch, and you're gonna grab your two tails, which is your working yarn and your tail from your long tail cast on. You're gonna wrap around your needle and then you're going to pull it up through that loop and then slide it off. And then we're going to do a rib. Um, a rib. This is going to be a rib knit stitch all the way around. So your next stitch is going to be a purl stitch. And you're going to put your working yarn in the front with your working yarn and your tail. And you're going to take your needle and you're going to go through the front stitch that wrap around and then you're gonna bring it up from behind and then slide that off the needle and then you're gonna bring your yarn to the back and then this time leave your your tail that you have left over from when you cast on leave that off to the side the only reason why I knitted the knitted the tail into the first two stitches is to lock in the stitch so now you're gonna 
work from your working yarn that's attached to your yarn ball. And you're gonna do a knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way around. So the next stitch is a knit, and then the next stitch is a purl. I do continental knitting, so um, it might look different to you, but um, how I do the continental knitting is the next stitch is gonna be a knit, and I'll hold it up close. I just go through, and then I just scoop the yarn and bring it through the loop and then slide off. And then for the purl stitch, I bring the yarn into the front, scoop through the front loop, and then bring it through the back and then slide that off. So you're gonna do that all the way around and you notice how it's connected now, right here. And you're gonna do knit purl, knit purl, all the way around. And you'll do 20 rows of that stitch. So when you come to the end, after your stitch marker where your first stitch is, it's gonna be another knit. So I'll meet you back after I finish the first row. I've come to my last stitch and the stitch marker is here on the left needle. I'm just going to move that over to the right needle and then we're gonna do the same thing again. We're going to knit. Since we used two of the um, pieces of yarn in the beginning to start this, to lock in the stitch, you're going to knit those two loops and it's like that on the first two stitches. So you're gonna knit through both of those and then you're gonna purl through the next. And then you're gonna knit and you're gonna purl and you're gonna do this for 20 rows. And the way you can tell your knit and purl stitches is your knit stitches look like V's and then your purl stitches have that little hump right there. So you're going to make sure that each knit stitch has a knit stitch on top of it. Each purl stitch has a purl stitch on top. So you're gonna knit and purl, and you're gonna do this for 20 rows. And then I'll meet you back here after my 20th row. And I also forgot to mention, um, when you cast on your stitches, make sure that your stitches don't twist around the wire. Make sure they're all even, because if it twists, then your hat's not gonna look right. So um, once I complete my 20 rows, I will meet you right back here. Okay, I've got my 20 rows. And um, one thing I wanted to tell you about this, if you decide to use the Karen Cotton Cakes yarn, it, even though it says it's worsted weight, that it's a weight four, it feels like it's a weight three. So I'm kind of not happy with how my stitches look on this right now. But anyway, um, I think worsted weight works the best. Like the basic Red Heart Super Saver, that works really well. And that's what this hat was um, made from. Okay, so we finished our 20 rows. And now what we're gonna do, it's an option. If you wanna do a double brim, you can do that. If not, just skip this until we start knitting three rows. But um, if you wanna do the double brim, you can um, continue to watch this. If you don't wanna do the double brim, um, your brim's gonna look like this and you can just fold it you know, after you're done with your hat, you don't have to sew the brim together. You can just fold it. Like some people like the folded look, but um, the double brim, it looks like, like this. So anyway, this is how you do the folded brim. Now you look at your first stitch after your stitch marker and you see it's a knit all the way down. You're gonna follow that all the way down right there. And you're gonna take your brim and you're gonna fold it up like this. And you're gonna take that stitch and you're going to put it 
whoops, on your, on your left needle. Let me follow that again, it's right there. So you're gonna take it and you're gonna put it, whoops, that's my tail, on your left needle, like so. Whoops, kinda wanna get it under one loop like that. And then you're going to knit those two stitches together. Oops, that tail, let me move that out of the way. You're gonna t knit those two stitches together, like so. And then you're gonna do that with each row. So you can see that I came out of here. Now you're gonna thread it onto your, that next stitch onto your needle. And then you're gonna knit You're going to knit those two stitches together. And this whole entire row is a knit row, so we're not doing the rib anymore. We're just doing the knit. You're going to come back behind the brim. Go underneath. And then knit those two. You're going to do this all the way around all knit and then I'll meet you back around. Okay, we've knitted all the way around and we have our brim folded. So now we're ready to continue with the body of the hat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna knit the next two rows. So on the pattern it says, um, the three rows of knit includes the first row of knit of the picked up stitches. So since we've already picked up the stitches and did a whole complete row, now we're gonna do two more knit rows. And um, let me go ahead and get that started. So we're gonna knit all the way around and you're gonna do two more rows of knit. If you didn't do um, the folded brim with the picked up stitches, you just prefer to keep the brim long and just fold it after your hat. Um, just do three rows of knit and I'll meet you back after my third row of knit stitches. We've got our three rows of knits and the next step is doing five rows of purl stitches. So it's going to be nothing but purl stitches for the next five rows. So we're going to purl all of our stitches all the way around for five complete rows. And I will meet you back after my fifth row. Now we finished our five rows of purl stitches. So now we are going to do three rows of just knit stitches. So start doing our knit stitches. And you're gonna do three rows of just plain knit stitches all the way around. And then I'll meet you back after the third row of knits. Now that we've finished our three rows of knit stitches, we are going to do five rows of rib stitches. So what we're going to do is you're going to knit one, Pull that up some. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, 
purl one, and you're gonna repeat that all the way around, and you're gonna do that for five rows, and then I'll meet you back after the fifth row. Okay, we've finished five rows of our rib stitches. Now we're going to do three rows of just knit stitches. So all you're gonna do is just knit all the way around for three rows. And then I'll meet you back. I'll meet you back right after I complete my third row of knits. Okay, now that we've completed our three rows of knit stitches, now we're going to do five rows of purl stitches. So just do a purl stitch on every stitch around the row. And just do five rows of purls. And then I'll meet you back after the fifth row. Now that we finished our five purl rows, now we're going to do three rows of knit. So in each stitch around, do a knit stitch and do three rows of knit. I finished my three rows of knit, so now we're going to do five rows of rib. So you're gonna knit one, Purl one, knit one, purl one. And you're gonna repeat this all the way around until you have five rows of ribbing. Now we have our five rows of rib stitches and now we're going to do three rows of just knit stitches. So you're gonna knit in every stitch all the way around and you're gonna do that for three rows and then I'll meet you back when I'm done with my third row. I finished the three rows of knits so now I'm going to do five rows of purl stitches. So every stitch around the row is going to be a purl stitch and you'll do five rows of purl stitches and then I'll meet you back after my fifth row. Now that we've finished our five rows of purls, we're going to do three rows of knit. So you're gonna knit in each stitch around and you're gonna do that for three rows. And then I'll meet you back as soon as I'm done with my third row of knits. Now we've finished our three rows of knit stitches, and now we're gonna do five rows of rib stitches. So you're gonna knit the first stitch, purl the second, knit the third, purl the fourth, and you're gonna repeat this all the way around for five rows. And then after this five rows is when we're gonna start our decreasing. So I'll meet you back here after our fifth row of rib stitches and then we'll start with our decreases. Okay, now that we've completed our five rows of rib stitching, we're going to work on our decreased rows. So what you're going to do on this round is you're going to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you're gonna knit two together. Gonna take these two stitches and knit those. And then you're gonna knit eight again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then knit two together. And then you're gonna repeat this all the way around and then I'll meet you back when we're finished with this round. So remember, knit eight, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together. 
Okay, now that we finished our decrease row, now um, we're just going to knit all the stitches. So there's gonna be no decreases on this round. You're just gonna knit all the way around. And then I'll meet you back for our next decrease row after this round. Okay, now we're gonna do another decrease row and this time you're gonna knit seven and then knit two together. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, knit two together, and you're gonna do this all the way around. So knit seven, knit two together, all the way around. Your last two stitches should be uh, knit two together, and then I'll meet you back once we're done with this row. Okay, now that we've finished that decrease row, now we're going to do just another row of knit stitches with no decreases. So just do a knit stitch in each stitch all the way around, and then I'll meet you back as soon as I'm done with this row. Now that we're done with our knit row, we're going to do another decrease row, which you're going to knit six stitches and then knit two together. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, knit two together. And then you'll repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you back after this row. Okay, we finished that decrease row. Now we're going to do another row of knits with no decreases. So you're just gonna knit this next row and then I'll meet you back at the end of this row and we'll start another row of decreases. Okay, now we're at the end of our knit row. Now we're going to do another decrease and we're going to knit five and then knit two together. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and then knit two together. And you're gonna repeat that all the way around and I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Okay, now that we've finished our decrease row, we're not going to do another row of knits. We're going to do another row of decrease. So on this row, we're going to knit four and then knit two together. So that's one, two, three, four, knit two together. And then I will meet you back up once I'm done with this row. Okay, now we're at the end of our decrease row. And this here is where I stop. Um, I don't like working with double pointed needles because every time I do, they always slide out of my work. So I just um, rather go ahead and finish off my hat here. But if you prefer working with double pointed needles so you won't have that many loops to weave in and cinch off, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, you just decrease each row until um, you knit two together of every stitch. So your next row would be knit three, knit two together, and then your row after that would be knit two, knit two together, then your row after that would be knit two together, knit two together, and then you close off your hat. But um, since I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna pull off some of my yarn so I'll have enough to weave in through the top of the hat. And I'm going to get my embroidery needle and thread that through. And then what I do is you've got your yarn on your right needle over here. So you're going to start threading your needle through the loops on your left needle. So you're gonna just take them off, you're gonna slip them off, just like that. And 
and this is going to cinch up the top of the hat. I'm going to pull some of the, pull that through. Work off the wrist. And you're going to pull that through. And you're going to do this until you get every loop off your needle. And I'll have the written pattern in my Etsy shop in case, because I know some people prefer the written pattern and it'll only be a dollar in my Etsy shop. So I know you're probably wondering why I'm doing a free tutorial on this and then charging for the written pattern, but it's because the money that I make from my written patterns are to buy more supplies because I knit dolls for the kids in my city and do doll hunts for them once a month. So I just use the money from my patterns to buy more yarn and supplies for that. Okay, so we've got the needles off. We've got all the loops on our yarn piece. Now we're just gonna close, the sh close it shut and you'll see how it closed like that. Looks like a little star on the top. You're gonna close it. Then you're going to thread your needle through the hole in the middle and then pull it up. I kind of just flip it inside out. And then you're gonna just make sure that hole stays closed. And what I do is I'll go across the other side of the hole. See if you can see that right there. And I'll thread it through a few stitches. Do it this way. And then I'll come up through, kind of knot it and then tighten it. And then I'll do that again on the other side. And I make pom-poms for some of them, but you don't have to have a pom-pom. I actually don't like a pom-pom on the top of my hat because when I wear my hat in my car, it hits the roof and it drives me nuts. But um, you're more than welcome to add a pom-pom to it if you like. And then I'm gonna just loop that through again. And then I usually um, kind of leave it like this. And then I'll tie a knot in the top. And sometimes I'll, um, well, most of the time, I'll get some Fabri-Tac and I'll put a little dot of it right here just to keep that knot secure. And then you can flip your hat back like this. And then your tail from the beginning. I forgot to mention that when you're doing the brim, right when you fold it, you can tuck your tail inside of it, but I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and weave that into the brim on the inside in between the two and just cut that and then you're finished with your hat and you can block it um, I usually block mine by um, washing them in cold water and then just letting it sit out to dry and that's it and I'll put links to my Etsy shop in the description. And um, also, if you're interested, I did. I have a Lord of the Rings yarn bowl that we make. Um, my husband and I have a 3D printing shop where we do some yarn accessories and all that good stuff. So I'll put the link to that also. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the hat. If you have any questions, just leave me some comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks.